Oh. Uh, but we do have a interesting question about uh, viruses and life on Earth from Jim in Ohio. Jim, tell us what you're thinking about. Hi. Uh, first of all, I'm 74 years old and I'm a lifelong atheist. Uh, I'm not a scientist or a science student. I, I just wanted to put that in so I'm not talking like a professional. Sure. Well, about a year ago, I came across a couple of YouTube channels. One is called SciShow, mm -hmm. SDI in that show, and then Speakers. And they did a couple of videos like, Are Viruses Alive? Mm. And uh, one of them, I think one was SciShow, uh, started out about how even scientists sometimes have trouble about what defines life mm -hmm. because some organisms that seem to show signs of life are still killing the third non living and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And uh, virus seems to be like that. You know, some points they're considered non living, but I guess when they attach to a cell or something, then they're considered living. And uh, they asked the rhetorical question how can you kill something killing viruses? How can you kill something that's not alive? Mm -hmm. So, I just wondered, uh, religious people claim that life could only start with the creator. And I just wondered, uh, because of course, background in biology and evolution, if viruses could be that link, I mean, going from, if maybe doing evolution, oh. non-living viruses and living viruses, maybe they bridge that gap between non-living evolving into living organisms. Yeah. How much time do we have left in the show? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I know we could be here for a long time. I mean, I'm interested in even the seemingly straightforward question of is a virus alive? Yeah. Uh, but uh, what what can you so, give me? So we'll start. There's a lot there, dude. There's yeah. a lot there. So we'll start with the why, why viruses aren't technically alive. Um, so... Uh, here's breaking news for you coming from a, a biology boy over here. We don't know what the fuck life is. We don't have a definition <laughs> for life. What we have instead of a definition is a set of qualifications that we use to define whether or not something is actually living. Um, uh, th there's seven of yeah, them. Yeah, that's what they said. That they yeah. don't have a... Yeah, there's Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Oh, you're just fine. That's there's what seven... they read into that they don't have a definition for life. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. So there's there's seven uh, qualifications that make the thing alive. Uh, uh, form and function, uh, order... No, sorry. Uh, order, growth and development, uh, 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 energy uh, 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 conversion, um, uh, uh, reproduction, evolution. Like, it goes on and on like this. Um, uh, uh, responses to... I only I already did five, and I'm going to be upset if I don't do the other two. Uh, order, form and function, growth and development... Uh, 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 energy conversion, reproduction, evolution, response to stimuli. Those are the seven. Um, and you notice a couple of those aren't always applicable. At least two of those don't make it like reproduction. Does that mean that you're not alive? You don't have kids? No, it's just kind of a generality. And evolution doesn't happen to individuals. It happens to populations. What the fuck is that, right? So, like, we have these constructs of what life is. Not every living thing does all of them. Some of them, you can't, you have to have groups of living things. With viruses, they do, like, three. They, they, they evolve real good. Um, they, they have form and function, and they have structure. They don't convert energy. They don't really technically respond to stimuli, but I guess if you kind of stretch your imagination a little bit, they do, but it's not like the same that you would think about anything. It's just, it's weird, man. And so they don't do all the things that we say living things do, and the thing about viruses is that they do not give a shit what we think about them, and they're doing their thing all the time. So that's why they're not technically considered alive is because they don't fit into our not even classification but qualification system for what life is. Uh, and that is just one of the many examples of how science actually works. Science isn't a big book of knowledge. Science is just a bunch of assholes looking out at nature, seeing some patterns and drawing boxes around the patterns. That doesn't mean that the boxes are real and it certainly doesn't mean that the patterns are real. Um, with that all being said, yes, viruses do factor into evolution in the history of life. Um, great example are endogenous retroviruses, which are still present in our DNA today. A retrovirus is a type of virus, a class six virus, uh, that, that implements its double-stranded DNA into its host DNA uh, using an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, and uh, that's how things like HIV work. Uh, horrifying. Um, and there's been a lot of those over the history of life on this planet, and in your DNA, you still got several of sequences in your DNA that aren't yours, that are old retroviral sequences that your body has just learned to turn off so you don't die weirdly. Um, and, and those play a huge part of our evolutionary history. Look up the history of placentas, y'all. That's what you're talking about there. Um, but as far as, like, 
a virus interacting with a different thing that isn't a virus and making a new thing that is alive, that's a bit of a stretch. But it's weird how not far off that concept is uh, considering other things like, for example, endosymbiosis, where you have uh, one organism eating another organism and then not digesting it, and that other organism just lives inside the first organism and does stuff, and they're mutually benefited. And that's where mitochondria and chloroplasts come from, y'all. So it's not, it's not like, as, as, as crazy as what you said may sound, I promise life has already done crazier things. Uh, and, and yes, all of that is a really important thought experiment, not only for what life is, but how it works and how it's evolved on this planet. I could talk for a lot longer about this. I'm not gonna, uh, cause we gotta go, but like, yeah, I encourage you to check out, um, more stuff about virology because it will blow your mind in the weirdest of ways. Also, remember I said the uh, retroviruses, class six viruses, look up class four viruses and, and why they're so frightening. Look those up. Could you Go over could you put some of that in your drop down uh, description so I can look them up? Yeah, I'm kind of slow about it, so I'm not taking a lot of it in. I don't think many of us are taking a lot of that in. Uh, I've definitely I was got... really enjoying <laughs> trying to ride the wave. <laughs> yeah, I, there was a lot of like, hey, I I understand that concept. That's neat. Oh wait, there's another one. Shit. Don't get me wrong. I'm taking it in when it comes from Forrest. I am just not retaining it and uh, regurgitating it. <laughs> You're missing out. Can I put in <laughs> yeah. one more thing real fast? I'm going to type in. I'm just going to show everybody fast. the Baltimore scheme of virus classification because I think that's a great place to start. That's why I was saying cl class four viruses include coronaviruses, and that's why I was telling everybody to look those up. Mm -hmm. people need to that's, that's all. It's socially, it's relevant. It's relevant in 2024. It actually yeah. is. Go on. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, could, I'm rambling. That's okay. It's interesting. I could listen to you for hours. I don't recommend uh, it. Maybe you could put a couple of recommend. <laughs> maybe you could uh, put a couple of those recommendations in the drop down description so I could look them up. I'm popping one uh, in the chat right now. Just to slip. Uh, thank you. Uh, can I slip in something real fast? A story. Huh. Yeah, uh, we're, we're just about to wrap up today, Jim. You're going to be our last phone call, so send us out on a high note. Qu quickly, what's on your mind? Okay. Well, I'm a, I'm a science fiction fan, so I'm a fan of Star Trek Next Generation. And there's one episode, I'll keep it short. I don't even call what season it's in. Uh, I won't go into the background of why he's asking, but there's a little android. Mm -hmm. He goes to Dr. Beverly Crusher, and he asks her, because he's wondering about this for reasons that's too long to go into, how she defines life, how they know life. And she comes up with some criteria like you just said, and then he asks, what about fire? And she, by the way, she doesn't know why he's asking this. Mm. But uh, he, he says, what about fire? And she questions an actually fire. And then uh, that criteria, well, fire grows, it feeds on energy, it reproduces, meaning it can fall sparks and carries this of itself to create new fires. Sure. So we produce it. Uh, it feeds on energy. And I don't recall what a reaction is to that, but anyway, I just thought I would talk that in there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I equate fire and life a lot when I'm teaching because you kind of get people understanding it because similar to fire, life is a process. Fire isn't a thing. You can't go get a tablespoon of fire. You know what I mean? And same thing with life. You can't just have some life in a jar. Um, it's just a chemical process. Fire is the conversion of hydrocarbons and oxygen into carbon dioxide and water. That's all it is. And similarly, life that we talk about is just the sum total of a lot of simple chemical reactions. And when the chemical reactions stop, life stops just the same way with fire. Um, you're not killing the fire, you're stopping a chemical reaction. So when we talk about life, that's all it is. It's just the beginning and the end of chemical reactions, except there isn't really a beginning for any one of us because the chemical reactions have been relatively ongoing and self-propagating for the past three and a half billion years. And that is nutty as fuck to think about. Thank you for answering my question. It was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, thank no, you so I'm much. I'm learn more about it. I appreciate you uh, bringing all of this up. I think it really just goes to highlight that uh, life is messy. You know, that none of these things have, like, very strict, like, well, now we're coloring within the lines. It's mm -hmm. one plus one equals two. It's so much more beautiful and fascinating and complex and fucking weird yeah. than all of that. Uh, and that's true, especially when we start to descend into the particulars and look at the different diversities within our own species. 
God damn, I am so glad to be here with you guys today having these conversations instead of just like regurgitating the same ancient poetry mm -hmm. and the same like fixed ideas built from a very small universe, how I spent most of my Sundays growing up. So <laughs> thank you so much to this incredible community for being here and for celebrating with us this weekend.